Greetings, comrades and friends. Central to the perspective and revolutionary strategy of the International Committee of the Fourth International is the recognition that the same systemic global capitalist breakdown that is impelling the imperialist powers to aggression and war is fueling social revolution. In the Middle East and North Africa, this combined process is palpable. No part of the world has been more ravaged by the wars that US imperialism has led and fomented since George W. Bush first proclaimed in the wake of the Stalinist bureaucracy's dissolution of the Soviet Union that Washington was establishing a new world order. There is not time to catalog all the horrors US imperialism has perpetrated in the Middle East and North Africa over the past three decades in the name of human rights and the war on terror. But given Washington's vendetta against Julian Assange and Chelsea Manning, it is appropriate to note that the people of the Middle East and above all Iraq were the victims of many of the most important and chilling of the Pentagon and CIA crimes exposed by WikiLeaks. Through its endless aggressions and wars, U.S. imperialism has torn asunder complex societies and raised entire states in the Middle East and North Africa. Think Iraq, Syria, Lib Libya, Yemen, and I could go on. Resulting in millions of deaths and rendering tens of millions homeless and stateless. The expenditure of vast amounts of blood and treasure, to use Barack, uh, Barack Obama's expression, in establishing unbridled uni U U.S. domination over the world's principal ex oil exploring, exporting regions is also bound up with social devastation in America. Yet these wars have manifestly failed to arrest the erosion of U.S. economic and global power. Nevertheless, U.S. imperialism, concentrating within itself all the decadism, decadence, parasitism, and criminality of an outmoded social order can't help itself. It is preparing for new and expanded wars in the Middle East, although it well recognizes that the next crap shot threatens to ignite a regional or even world war. U.S. imperialism is intensifying its campaign through illegal unilateral sanctions to crash the Iranian economy and precipitate regime change. It is lavishing arms on Saudi Arabia and providing crucial logistical and military support to Riyadh's assault on Yemen. It is fanning Israeli aggression, giving legal recognition to Israel's annexation of the Golan Heights. And U.S. military forces continue to control large swaths of eastern Syria, including its major oil fields, so as to strangle Syria economically and prepare fresh aggression. The European imperialist powers are no less predatory. They too are patrons of the House of Saud and the bloody Sisi dictatorship in Egypt. And they too defend the Zionist state's brutal subjugation of the Palestinian people to the hilt. Their differences with Washington. The Europeans have, for example, argued for a more aggressive Western imperialist intervention in Syria while opposing Washington's economic war in Iran are the differences of rival gangsters over the division of the spoils. But the Middle East and North Africa are not just ravished by imperialist war and aggression. They are also being convulsed by the resurgence of global class struggle. The working class is striving to assert its interest in a region that is characterized by massive social inequality. And this is true of Israel as much as of Iran, Saudi Arabia and Egypt and characterized by brutal state violence. The 2011 NATO war in Libya and the U.S.'s deployment of al-Qaeda-aligned Islamists against the Syrian regime were imperialism's response, or at least a key element in its response, to the Arab Spring, to the initial upsurge in class struggle engendered by the 2008 global economic crisis. Above all, the working class led uprisings that chased from power the imperialist clients Hosni Mubarak in Egypt and Ben Ali in Tunisia. Since 2018, there has been a fresh wave of working class struggle across the region. This includes strikes and mass protests in Iran, public sector strikes in Israel, 
mass teacher strikes in Tunisia and Morocco, and months of mass protests in Sudan that caused the army, fearing revolution, to oust the dictator al-Bashir, who had himself seized power in a 1989 military coup. Of a special significance are the developments in Algeria, where a venal imperialist back regime that has for decades looted the country's wealth is, in the face of mass working class unrest, attempting a cosmetic makeover by retiring the longtime president Abdelaziz Bouteflika. The upsurge of the working class in Algeria and across the region raises crucial issues and questions of revolutionary perspective and strategy. Above all, the necessity of politically arming the working class with the program of permanent revolution. The democratic and social aspirations of the masses, from the eradication of landlordism and the establishment of genuine equality among working people of all ethnicities and religions to freedoms from imperialism will only be realized through socialist revolution. The working class in every country must forge its political independence, rally the toilers behind it in a struggle against imperialism and all factions of the national bourgeoisie and for workers' power, and unite and coordinate its struggles with those across the region and around the world. Here, the lessons of the 2011 Egyptian revolution are pivotal. It was the working class that drove Mubarak from power, but the revolution was subsequently derailed. Forces like the pseudo-left revolutionary socialists were system worked systematically to tie the working class to the Egyptian bourgeoisie and its states by urging support for a democratic transition, led first by the purportedly progressive section of the military, then Mercy and his Muslim Brotherhood, and finally the Tamarod, which boosted Sisi as a Democrat, Democrat thereby blazing the path for the military's return to power. Similarly, in Algeria today, Pseudo-left groups like the Pabloite Socialist Workers' Party are seeking to forestall revolution and subordinate the working class to the bourgeoisie and imperialism by championing the call for a constituent assembly. That is, a reshuffling of the personnel of the current regime under cover of flowery constitutional promises. To prevent this trap from being sprung, the most class-conscious workers and youth must fight for the building of workers' committees of action, independent of the government and its allied trade unions, to coordinate opposition to military police repression and austerity, and as the future organs of workers' state power, and, above all, to build a revolutionary Marxist party to guide the struggle for the political independence of the working class and socialism. Invariably, those forces, political forces, that demand in the name of democracy that the working class be subordinated to the bourgeoisie and petty bourgeoisie are tied politically and materially to imperialism. Take the example of Turkey, where the comrades of the Socialist Istilik are fighting to found a section of the International Committee of the Fourth International. In the name of defending democracy against Erdogan's Islamist authoritarian regime, the Turkish pseudo-left is supporting a right-wing is supporting right-wing capitalist parties oriented to, to NATO, the European Union, and US imperialism. The Republican People's Party and the People's Democratic Party. The former is the party of the traditional Kemalist capitalist ruling elite and is complicit in all its crimes, including bloody coups directed against the working class and the Turkish bourgeoisie's brutal 35-year counterinsurgency war against the Kurdish people. The HDP, or People's Democratic Party, is the political front of the Kurdish nationalist PKK, which in the 1980s launched armed struggle in the name of socialism, but like such bourgeois national movements around the world, has since 1991 orientated to imperialism. It supported the 1991 Gulf War and the 2003 invasion of Iraq. And, it's, it's, and in Syria, its offshoot, the YPJ has served for the past four years as Washington's principal proxy army. The travails of the people of the Middle East over the past century demonstrate that there can be no struggle for democracy outside the struggle against imperialism, the principal bastion of reaction in the Middle East. And there can be no struggle against imperialism outside the mobilization of the working class in the struggle for socialism. In conclusion, workers around the world must oppose the U.S. regime change offensive against Iran and all imperialism's predations in the Middle East and actively support the struggle of their class brothers and sisters across the region. 
The workers of North America and Europe have a special re responsibility in this regard. In opposing war and developing the class struggle, they will be striking a blow for the liberation of the masses of the Middle East. Just as when the workers of Algeria rebel against that country's venal national bourgeois regime, they are striking blows against Macron and Trump. The objective unity of the working class animates the perspective of the International Committee of the Fourth International, and it must find expression in the coming period in the development of sections of the Fourth International across middle, the Middle East and North Africa. Thank you.